viewers, welcome to the new February patch detail movie something. Anyway, um, there have been some drastic changes in this patch to social policies, buildings, um, terrain improvements and so on. And I, well, let's just say finally it arrived and I would like to say a, thing, a few things I noticed um, I played the game till now like hour and a half so that should be enough I guess I can now actually you know know what I'm talking about anyways um, first social policies uh, tradition and liberty introduced some serious changes honor piety patronage order autocracy freedom rationalism and commerce remained mostly the same although order re received a nerf in production rate of buildings but the most interesting changes happened in tradition and the liberty tree so the opening tradition social policy now gives three culture in the capital for faster land grab and also increases border expansion in all cities. That's for picking tradition. The first one in Liberty gives one culture in every city. So as you can see, uh, these introductionary social policies have been boosted. Uh, I think the one culture in every city was a uh, representation before. Anyway. Let's continue to tradition. Um, aristocracy, the wonder building bonus has been nerfed by 13% if I'm not mistaken, to 20% bonus. Legalism, now provides a free cultural building in your first four cities. I have no idea what this does. I haven't picked uh, legalism yet. So if you find out, please tell me. But I guess it provides a free monument in first four cities. Um, oligarchy has been changed for the better. Now garrison units cost no maintenance and cities with the garrison gain 100% attack ranged combat strength. So this means that now cities, if they have a garrison, that garrison costs no zero gold to upkeep and the cities attack at the same strength as their strength is represented. So what was happening before or what happens if you don't have this social policy is that cities attack at half their listed strength. So if it's a city with 25 strength, it attacks with a power of 12.5. With this social policy and if you have a garrison in the city, it attacks at full 25 strength. Um, landed Elite now increases the growth in all your cities, basically an effect of granary and, uh, well, the former granary and the Aztec unique ability in all your cities, which is very good. And monarchy, which buffs your capital. Uh, gold, uh, unhappiness, uh, well, go away. Um, you get extra gold and happiness go, goes away for every two citizens in your capital. So, tradition is now mixed, uh, it's now good both for large empires and small ones. And the same is true with Liberty, a little bit more focused on ICS or many cities and a little bit less on smaller ones. But So the first is that all your cities gain one culture, so you can skip monuments if you really want to. Collective rule speeds up the training of settlers, this was the initial liberty before and now also you get a free settler near your capital so this is a very good social policy to have if you want to find a second city quickly if there are some abundant resources nearby that you want to grab away from your neighbor and the republic now boosts as before production on, in all your cities by one hammer which is now more important because I'll get back to that later um, Citizenship, worker construction rate still increased by 25% and a free worker appears near your capital so you can save 310 gold I think with this social policy or 
17 turns of building. Uh, representation. Each city you found will increase the culture cost of your policies by 33% less than normal. So, and it also starts a 10 turn golden age on standard speed, I checked that, but I have no clue how the policy re cost reduction works, because you have to pick a policy to actually get this policy, so I didn't see any changes in the numbers, because, you know... Anyway, I'll try to figure this out and make an, I don't know, addendum or something later. I guess what it means is that each city you, f you found will reduce the actual um, additional cost to your cities. Actually, let's check this first. Uh, each city you own will increase social policy cost by 30%. This has been slightly nerfed. Okay. So I guess it reduces this number of 30%. I'm not sure. Anyway, we will figure this out soon enough. Maybe even tonight. Uh, meritocracy remained the same, except now you get the great person of your choice, as well as the happiness bonuses of your choice near the capital, which means you can get the great engineer, scientist, I don't know, merchant if you really want to. Um, this is excellent, this is very worth it, not a, um, not just because you can, I don't know, bulb a science um, attack with your great scientist, or rush by a wonder with a great engineer, but now the bonuses from unique terrain improvements have been also buffed by one. So this is actually a very good way to either boost your capital production or get a wonder built or get a critical tech you want fast. Honor remained the same except they fixed the typo in discipline. It now correctly displays 10% bonus. Um, piety remained the same except the duration of the golden age isn't listed anymore but I guess it's still 10 turns. Uh, patronage also remained the same and so on. So these are the changes in social policies. Actually, now that you now that I mention it, this is interesting. Oh yes, um, as you can see, your first policy will be available in nine turns. This is because uh, the palace has been boosted to provide um, extra culture in your capital see plus two from traits oh sorry this is the French my bad I thought they boosted something in the capital though yes production and I don't know gold maybe I think it's gold they added that anyway the extra culture is from uh, playing the French so ignore that that was a really rookie mistake um, okay that's that's the social policy is changed. Now let's head to buildings and improvements. Um, first, let us get to yep, unique um, national wonders. The cost goes up the more cities there are in the empire. Okay, so I checked this on a large map, and what I saw was a 20 hammer increase for every city, extra city I had. So the listed cost is 100 hammers and I had six cities and it decreased to 200 hammers. These numbers might be off, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that um, the cost increases by a lot. So either make your national college fast or you will have to spend some time hammering it in. The same goes, the same is true for National Epic and um, Ironworks and so on. I'm, I'm, my guess is that on standard map size the increase is 25 hammers per city, but, um, uh, well, in any case it increases by a lot. So it's either 20 or 25 or 30 hammers per new city, depending on the map size. Um, and of course uh, speed um, anyway um, that's the national wonders 
What has been changed next? Yes, trading posts now provide only one gold until economics, at which point they resume generating two gold as before. Um, this is a terrible income nerf and it's really horrible. I played that um, large map with Suleiman and most AIs were most AI were broke um, at around turn 100. So uh, working happiness resources that provide gold and I don't know uh, fish and so on is now extremely important, uh, more important than before. So they buffed production uh, in favor of money generation. And I can tell you that research agreements were very rare and buying out city-states was extremely rare in my game that I played for like 150 turns. So this is actually a good thing because now the AI suffers as well and you can optimize your output. You need to think about what into what you invest, in what buildings you build. Uh, how many units you have and you will work those river tiles and you will work those luxury resources that generate extra gold um, Instead of just you know trade posting everything um, Next change was in um, Yep lighthouse and fish fish now provide only two food when unworked instead of three as it was before uh, the lighthouse cost has been reduced and now uh, the effect is the same. However, the workboats now provide, uh, I think, uh, food, not gold, if placed on fish. Um, so, all in all, um, you know, when you build a lighthouse and when you build a workboat your food generation will actually be larger on fish but your gold income will be less so that's the change but you have to invest into your city and into the tile itself um, circus is the, the, still the same uh, stables have been buffed significantly uh, the cost has been reduced now it costs slightly more than a single horseman and all horse, sheep and cattle resources that are worked by the city get one extra hammer. So the, they now become five yield tiles, which is excellent news. The same is true uh, for pottery. Uh, it now gives two food and white bananas and deer um, gain one food if worked. Uh, if, if, if a granary is present in that city. So your cities can grow regardless of city-states and so on. Um, the next change, yep, Coliseum has been nerfed. It now gives only two happiness, but the maintenance is two gold. So you can now build them earlier. That's the good news. Um, and you can build them faster due, due to all the production bonuses. The tiles receive um, so it's now a basic building and you have to have it in every city because trading for resources is very difficult um, and of course the circus maximus also increases the cost by the number of cities you have um, the armory has the maintenance cost has been reduced by one gold so now it's two which is okay um, and creating a lumber mill has been moved to construction, so it's not a medieval thing anymore. It's It has been moved from engineering. Actually, I think bridging and lumber mill creation have been switched from engineering to construction and vice versa. Um, the new building, uh, Aqueduct, is now effectively working as a uh, hospital. So it increases you the 40% um, of the food is carried over to the next citizen, which means your cities can now grow very large very early, and it's merely 10% less than the ho uh, the hospital used to provide, which was way back here. So yep, now you can build an aqueduct and grow your few cities to very high population levels uh, very early. 
Um, the forge, the cost has been also reduced and all sources of iron worked by the city produce one extra production. So that's also nice. The workshop has been reworked, it now works for all production and it gives two production by itself. But the cost is now higher. So yeah. Um, next imp next building um, just a second garden maintenance has been reduced to one gold that's the change uh, universities now have two scientist slots and that's excellent news so not only Siam can now spam great great scientists um, yep ironworks has been moved to machinery from chemistry so it now comes very early if you want it and the production bonus has been nerfed to 8 hammers uh, what next what next um, yep the observatory lost the scientist slot in favor of the uh, university I'm not sure about the other slots but they have been shuffled as well I think now temples provide only one or something like that I don't know anyway um, windmill now boosts the production of buildings, so it switched places with uh, the workshop. But it's 15% only, not 20 as it used to be on the workshops, and now provides two hammers in itself. So that's the new windmill. And now economics, as I said, increase the gold deal from trade posts and camps by one gold. If you're wondering what the camps are, ivory and deer those are the camps. Um, chemistry now boosts mine production and quarry production finally so now your mines can actually produce more hammers than your lumber mills and it comes relatively early in the Renaissance so you will build mines because they will provide four hammers. Um, Scient uh, lumber mill bonus has been moved to scientific theory from steam power so that's also good news um, oh yeah fertilizer has received some significant changes plantation food yield improved by one pasture food yield improved by one and the last bonus is like it was before so farms without f uh, access to fresh water get one food extra so now your plantation food plantations are bananas uh, all the happiness resources and so on gain one food um, and the same is true for pasture so cow horses and sheep also gain one food so now they become six yield tiles and uh, these mm, plantation tiles also become six yield tiles at least however the bonus the, the, the extra food from sugar has been removed so it's now two food three gold I think tile anyway um, hospital now gives five food instead of boosting the growth further so well I guess it's becoming situational now maybe you want it maybe you don't it can replace a few farms in your cities. Um, the factory is now only 25% production, but it has base production. We we have yet to see if this will be a bonus to production or a nerf. Probably a bonus because all of these uh, bonuses here from the stable um, and um, the forge and so on so it's and the new mines and so on so it's probably going to be a bonus but haven't tested it yet and the railroad also got a nerf to 25% so it's a cut in overall production um, what received a boost is the power plants solar plant now gives 35 production and 4 production base by itself and the same is true for the nuclear plant and now these two are mutually exclusive so you can't have a nuclear and a solar plant in the same city unfortunately there are still no power plants that are not reliant on desert tiles or nuclear power like I don't know an oil plant I've been asking for <laughs> a few months now um, 
and that's about it I think um, medical lab still provides extra food like it did it now stacks with uh, aqueduct not hospital I guess Firaxis wouldn't be Firaxis if not for the typos and that's it these are the changes in the buildings um, so how does the game play now? well from what I've seen um, AIs will AIs have some new patterns in movement from what I've seen I don't know what that means yet but um, what I did see is that um, the diplomacy is much more balanced so uh, they are not so quick to denounce, they are not so quick to befriend and denouncements and friendships now last only for 50 turns so even if you get denounced that will go away if the situation changes. What I've seen that um, opinions on you change uh, all the time so for example one AI, one AI can be friendly with you for 5 turns then uh, guarded for 10 turns, then friendly again, then neutral and so on. So it basically depends on how much stuff you do together and if you do something that upsets them and so on and it's much more fluent now, it's not set in stone like it used to be and since friendships and uh, denouncements go away you can now actually, I think, I'll play some a few games and I'll see, check it out, but um, I think now relationships can re be repaired with AIs that are scripted to do so. Um, so that's good news. As for how the game plays, you are going to be uh, starving for money at start. You need to sell away your resources as usual, but you won't be able to because the AI will be broke as well. And you are going to struggle for happiness now. Um, if you don't build um, circuses and coliseums and if you don't trade for luxury resources so finally again trading for luxury resources and building buildings that provide happiness is again a must if you want to have a large empire um, you can't just sell away all your happiness resources and you know laugh in their faces. Um, the tech pace is also going to be slower um, because the AIs don't have that much money at start. I guess they will pick up in the Renaissance when trade posts start providing two gold again but um, at in early game you will be lucky if you can sign three research agreements until late medieval era actually in the last game I, I saw only one AI to AI research agreement obviously this can change if the AI starts with gold mines or, or silver mines um, but generally speaking the tech pace is going to be much slower at start it's going to pick up in the renaissance which is I guess what it's supposed to be renaissance all about and um, yeah that's it you're going to build more farms and more lumber mills and mines at start uh, because well trade posts simply aren't worth it at start and you are going to have to work your resource styles even more often than before but as I said uh, production has been boosted so for example for example in Paris um, these cows will provide three food and two hammers with uh, stables and this mine here will provide three hammers with um, a mine and four hammers at chemistry and if I get a horse somewhere around here that will be two more hammers as well so Paris will be a strong production city in this game I'll, I could actually play this game for myself um, a bit this is a nice start anyway these are the changes in the patch maybe I missed some um, but these are the most important ones in any case. See you in the next Let's Play.